world where we did not have languages to communicate with. Maybe we want something or we want to talk about our feelings. How would we do that without languages? We could use facial expressions. We could use hand gestures or we could try different tones of our voice. That's exactly what early man did. You know what else he did? He also tried pictures, drawing pictures on the walls of his caves. As human civilization advanced, man discovered better ways to communicate. That's how languages came into being. There are about 7,000 different languages that are spoken world over. Knowing a language does not make communication effective. It takes two people to know the same language to be able to communicate effectively. I remember this funny incident that happened in my life when I had just moved to Hyderabad. I did not know a word of Telugu, which is the most common language that's spoken here. As I settled down in the house, there was a lady from the area who was looking for housework. And when she came to me, I asked her one question, do you know Hindi? And she nodded. I thought that makes things easier for me. So I gave her all the instructions about the work at home in Hindi and she nodded. After a few hours, when I checked up on how she was doing, I realized that she has been doing everything opposite to what I had told her. When my husband came, he translated everything between the two of us and to my utter shock, I realized that she did not know Hindi. And there I was not knowing Telugu. A lot of words were spoken, very little got communicated. I'm sure you must have had these kind of instances in your life as well. So for communication to be effective, it is not just enough to have a lot of languages, but people have to know these languages to understand each other. This passage is not a story, but it's a very interesting and informative prose about the importance of language, how different languages came into being with a focus on the Indian scenario. Now language is a very important part of one's culture and it's important to keep your unique culture alive. And keeping your culture alive also means to keep your unique mother tongue alive. I'm sure all of you know English. Some of you might be passionate about the English language. That's all good. But do you know your mother tongue as well? I want to encourage you to learn your mother tongue, whether to speak it, read it or write it, because that's how we keep our cultures alive. And that's very important. In this passage, we also learn about some endangered languages. UNESCO has listed various languages that are dying. This is not a good sign of cultures thriving. So we have to preserve our languages. And one of the ways to do it is to learn our own languages ourselves. I hope you've read the passage. Now let's go into the vocabulary section. There are words and their meanings given at the end of the passage. I will take you through two of them. One, rigid. Rigid means stiff, not flexible. Let's use that in a sentence. There are rigid rules about getting together in public places now. The second one, chaos. A state of confusion. If you were to use that in a sentence, you could say, this pandemic brought about a lot of chaos in our lives. There are more words given there. Please look through them, understand their meanings and use them in your own sentences. We already learned about homophones. These are words that have the same pronunciation but different spellings and different meanings. Let's get into that exercise. Number one, allowed. So we have to find a word that sounds the same but means different. Yes, allowed. A-L-O-U-D. The second one is soul. S-O-U-L can be a homophone. Three, feet. 
F-E-A-T is a homophone for that. Number four, him, H-Y-M-N, to mean a song. What is a homophone for that? H-I-M, him. Number five, root, as in roots of plants. A homophone for that would be root, R-O-U-T-E, or route in American English. Number six, no. K-N-O-W also is pronounced the same way, no. So those are homophones. Number seven, weather. W-H-E-T-H-E-R, weather, is a homophone. Number eight, sail, S-A-I-L. Can you think of a homophone for that? Yes, the sail in the malls, S-A-L-E. Well done. Let's move on to page 31, where you would find an exercise based on abbreviations. Now, abbreviations are the short forms of a longish phrase. I'll give you an example. MA, he did an MA in literature. MA is the abbreviation for Master of Arts. So abbreviations can be formed by taking the first letters of the words in the phrase. Now I'm going to tell you the long phrases or the longish words and you have to come up with the common abbreviations for these. One, doctor. This is how the abbreviation looks like. Second, calories. This is the abbreviation for that. Third one, kilometers. We write it as KM. Fourth one, kilograms, KG. How do you write number in an abbreviated form? Like this. There are other words you can find abbreviations for in that exercise. Learning doesn't have to stop at this. You can look around you. When you read books or newspapers, you can come across so many different kinds of abbreviations. Take a mental note of all this and keep learning. Following this, there is a comprehension section with a bunch of questions. You can try and answer them. If you're in doubt, go back to the passage. I know it's a difficult passage. Read it again and try and answer these. Now we've reached the grammar section. In this section, we learn about genders. And it's nothing complicated like in other languages like French or Hindi. It's pretty straightforward. There are four genders. One is masculine. Example, boy. It is denoting a male. The second one is feminine gender, denoting a female. Example, girl. The third one is a common gender, it can be either male or female. Example, child. It can be a boy child or a girl child. If you've not specified it, it becomes a common gender. The fourth one is neuter gender. This is normally a non-living thing which cannot be categorized as a male or a female. Example, chair. Let's move on to the exercise that's based on this concept of gender. On page 33, we find this. Write down the feminine gender forms of the following words. Let's try. One, uncle. What is the feminine gender of this word? Aunt. It's a totally different word. Second one, prince. What is the feminine gender of prince? Princess. You add double S to the word and get the feminine gender. Third one is also similar, tiger. The feminine gender is tigress. Another example that I can think of is lion. What is the feminine gender? Lioness. Fourth one, hero. You add I-N to it and you get the feminine gender, heroine. Five, grandfather. What is the feminine gender? Grandmother. Six, salesman. The feminine gender is saleswoman. Cock, hen. Priest, priestess, waiter, waitress, duke, duchess. You may have noticed that there are no hard and fast rules for this. It comes by practice. So keep in mind 
all these different patterns and then you will be able to tell the masculine gender form and the feminine gender form of various nouns. There is one more exercise that's based on the concept of gender that's given on page number 33 and that is to decide if those words that are given belong to the common gender or to the neuter gender. Now one thing to keep in mind when you do this is to see if these nouns are living or non-living things. If it's a non-living thing, for sure it is belonging to the neuter gender. So go ahead and do this simple exercise. We also have a section on communication that's based on listening, speaking and writing. And all this have to do with your practice. Being multilingual is a very good thing. What does it mean? It means to know different languages. You don't have to be an expert in every single language, but you can start this journey by learning a particular word in different languages. We are going to sing to you a song that is very common, but in this song, we are going to introduce to you the word hello in 13 different languages. Enjoy. If you're happy and you know it, say hello. If you're happy and you know it, say hello. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, say hello, say hello, konnichiwa, boncho, privia, ni hao, kalimera, jumbo, hao, guten tag, namaste, salam, Hola 